Hello, thank you very much for being here, Joe, and giving us a presentation today on nostoc control. Joe Neal is a weed scientist and extension specialist at NC State University in the Department of Horticulture. So take it away, Joe, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Stacy. Yeah, and today, uh, what I want to do is give you a bit of a research update on the work that we've done on nostoc. Now, nostoc is not a plant. It's a cyanobacterium. And there are many, many different species of this, uh, of cyanobacteria out there in the world. They, they are almost ubiquitous. They live in aquatic environments, terrestrial environments, uh, wet environments, dry environments. Uh, they are photosynthetic, and some are even nitrogen fixing. Now, in container nurseries, we have a nostoc that can form gelatinous masses on the ground cloth. And these, these slippery masses uh, are hazards for employees. And if you have had nostoc in your nursery, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, you know, stepping on this when you're when you're moving plants, uh, particularly if you're trying to move large plants, can be a, a, a hazardous to your employees and to yourself. So, what do we know about it? Well, number one, we're not even 100% sure we know what species we're dealing with. We assume it is Nostoc communis, which is a very widespread species as found in aquatic and, and terrestrial areas. Um, but honestly, we're not 100% sure because as a cyanobacterium, of course, you know, there are no flower parts or anything that we can look at to key it out. We'll have to get some genetic testing to find out exactly what we're dealing with. And there are no pesticides labeled for control of nostoc in nurseries. But what do we know? Um, Cyanobacterium uh, are problems on golf greens, and it, while it may be a different species, at least we can draw some analogies from the work that, that, that they have done. In nurseries, the one thing we can be sure of is that glyphosate doesn't work, because if it did, we wouldn't be having this conversation today, because it would be under control. Our standard herbicides don't work on it either. Uh, here is a, a small experiment that we did where we're looking at, um, at applications of Marengo and SureGuard, which we commonly use for, for weed control in gravel roadways and uh, in the nursery. And essentially what we saw is uh, following an application of, of the herbicide, here's the non-treated area had about 28% cover, the Marengo treated area had 24% cover, and the SureGuard had about 20% cover of Nostoc. So was there a slight effect on the Nostoc cover? Perhaps so, uh, but it really was, was uh, not, a level of suppression that would have uh, would have been acceptable. So, uh, what is what research is available? Well, in golf turf, the recommendations are to reduce water. Well, yes, that would be very helpful. But in a container nursery, we have to water every day, right? Especially in the summertime. Uh, there is work uh, that has been done with certain fungicides like Mancozeb, uh, applied at 14 day intervals as a suppressive treatment um, throughout the, basically throughout the growing season. If you reapply every 14 days, we can get suppression uh, in turf grass. Oregon State University did some work with solarization and essentially solarizing means pulling clear plastic over the, the gravel area, leaving it in the summertime, leaving it there for six weeks and don't irrigate. Certainly that's not a practical solution for container nurseries. Flame weeders, well, you know, they may work uh, for a lot of weeds, but uh, this one uh, comes back from desiccation very effectively. So you need many applications. Um, the one promising treatment that they included in their studies was Scyther pelargonic acid, and they essentially got what appears to be about 100% control with one application of Scythe, right? So that was an encouraging thing to see. 
uh, growers here on the East Coast have reported uh, success with some sanitizing agents such as peroxides and, uh, and the SA20 sanitizing products. So we have some evidence that we could, have, we could test. I also look to, to the aquatic systems because cyanobacterium are problems in aquatic systems. What do people do for cyanobacterium control in aquatic systems? Copper compounds, diquat, which is registered for use in nurseries, right? Uh, photosynthetic inhibitors have been used in the past, not currently, but in the past were used for algae and cyanobacterium, uh, specifically diuron and simazine, right? Uh, and simazine, of course, is labeled for use in nurseries. Diuron is not labeled for use in nurseries, but it has been tested uh, around ornamental plants and it's widely used in orchards. So, you know, it might have some potential. All right, so we have some things that looked like they had potential for testing. So we looked at these materials like diuron and simazine, uh, copper-based algicides and fungicides, diquat, sanitizing agents, etc. And so in our first uh, experiment, what we, we saw was uh, compared to the, the treatment standard bare, bare ground treatments like Marengo and Shergar that did not control the Nostoc, our Simazine and di the Diuron treatment both provided essentially complete control. Very notably, the diquat treatment that's used in aquatic systems for cyanobacterium control did not suppress the Nostoc. So we thought, wow, okay, the simazine looked really good. Okay, it's labeled for use in nurseries. But we have a solution. And then we repeated the experiment and here's what we saw. The diuron worked, the simazine looked like we didn't do anything. So clearly there's a lot of variability out there. So we started looking at, well, what are, what, what can, else can we learn from this? We know that there is a, of dose response with the diuron. This is diuron dose response. Over time, all of the, um, so this is the point at which applications are made and then the cover, percent cover of NOSTOC goes down. Uh, this is the quarter pound rate, half pound and one pound. So essentially it's a one pint and one quart per, per acre uh, applications of the diuron 4L. Uh, right here. So it looks like a half to one uh, uh, one quart per acre will do it. Less than that was less effective. Okay, and this blue line is the cover of the non-treated. Uh, and as you can see, we were getting up to 90% uh, uh, cover. So a really good test site. Um, uh, but what we also found was if we use something like a box blade, or just a uh, bucket on a tractor to disturb the gravel, to scrape the gravel a little bit, not scrape it off, but just disturb the gravel and then put a herbicide down. What we saw was the diuron worked even better. So even at a low rate, it basically was preventing the Nostoc from recovering. So, but what I'm concerned about with diuron is the fact that it is somewhat water soluble and it can move. And in this study, we had diuron on the edge and on the edge here, but we did not treat the center of this roadway with any herbicide, but the diuron moved. All right, so we're really a little, that is one reason we're a little concerned uh, about diuron. It is also moderately toxic to fish and aquatic invertebrates. Okay, so in a gravel roadway, we could have a good bit of movement of the herbicide. So we're going to look at, at those issues. Is it moving? Um, and can we use lower and lower doses? What, how low a dose can we use uh, to uh, control the nostoc without risking leaching and, and runoff? But what else could, did we learn from this? It, when we disturbed the surface, here is the photo where we disturbed the surface before we applied simazine. And on this side of the roadway, we applied the simazine without disturbing the surface with the box blade. Look at the difference. You can see the line right there where we stopped spraying the simazine, okay? And, and here you can, here is the line. We did thin the Nostoc a little bit with the simazine, but it's growing quite well. 
Alrighty, so it looks like we may explain why we have some variability with simazine, that uh, it will work better if we scrape the gravel uh, before we, we do the application. So right now, simazine may be the only or the best labeled option for residual control. It's labeled for use in nurseries. We do get variable results, but if you scrape the gravel before you make the application, you'll get better uh, control. Use one quart per acre uh, at, at least, okay? Anything less than a quart per acre was not effective. Um, and then, you know, it's not going to be complete control, so you may have to supplement with some additional treatments. Well, what else might that be? Well, we evaluated a number of what you would call a curative or a post-emergence type uh, product. We looked at the sanitizing agents, SA20 and Green Clean Pro. We looked at copper compounds. Uh, we con tried the diquat again just to confirm our initial uh, results. And we looked at the Mancozeb, which had been, uh, has been used in turf grass. Um, so again, the products that we used, SA20 disinfectant, it's you know labeled for algae and mildew control and disinfectants for greenhouses and pots and tools. Uh, and it is labeled for use in ornamentals. Uh, it's a uh, basically ammonium chloride uh, formulation. Green clean uh, algicide is a sodium uh, carbonate per, per, peroxyhydrate. So, uh, the label says it controls blue-green algae, and it's labeled for use in greenhouses and nurseries. So again, it's it's a label for the site. Uh, Manzate Pro Stick is Mancozeb. It's a fungicide that's labeled for use on many crops. Uh, we also included uh, copper compounds, a Captain XTR, which is labeled for algae control in ponds, not in nurseries, and Junction which is labeled for disease control in greenhouses and outdoor grown ornamentals. And it is a combination of Mancozeb with a copper uh, formulation. But what did the results look like? Well, this is our non-treated and nice solid stand of, uh, of the uh, Nostoc. And here is the Diquat confirming what we saw before, that it discolored the Nostoc a little bit, but really provided no uh, effective control. Similarly, the, the Green Clean Pro and the Scythe, this happens to be a photo of the Green Clean Pro. There's a dotted line there that shows the edge of the treated plot, non-treated to the right, treated to the left, obviously no control. As I said, Scythe, which had worked well in Oregon, did not work at all in our trial. The Mantate Pro Stiff or Mancozeb, in this case, the non-treated is to the left, the treated area is to the right. You can see it definitely thinned out, but as in the turf grass areas, they recommend reapplying the uh, Mancozeb every 14 days. So this is going to be something that you would have to maintain and keep reapplying. The SA20 discolored the Nostoc thinned it out. <clears throat> Again, only a contact type action, so multiple repeated applications would certainly need to, uh, to happen. This is following two applications, right? Uh, for the copper compounds, the Captain XLR, uh, you know, provided the best uh, suppression uh, of the uh, of the Nostoc better than the junction, but junction had similar activity to the uh, Mancozeb. So here's, here's what the data looked like. The uh, Mancozeb Pro Stick, uh, Captain X to X uh, TR, the junction and the SA20 all had some suppression for about 21 days, uh, 21 to 30 days. And then things started regrowing. The Scythe, the Reward, Green Clean Pro, uh, had no effect on the Nostoc. So where do we go from here? Uh, we know things that are not effective. We know things that have some activity. I mean, it's not great, but it, it will provide some suppression. 
Um, what I'm recommending now, based on you know our research, but also what is legal and what is labeled for use, would be to use a scraping device like a uh, like a, a tractor bucket or a box blade, scrape the area, and then apply simazine uh, at one quart uh, per acre or one to one and a half quarts per acre. We're trying to get some of these other options labeled, uh, and the USDA IR4 program uh, is supporting research to evaluate these other products to see if if they are valuable enough uh, uh, in controlling NOSDOC, and if so, uh, to facilitate uh, registrations. And, uh, and we're continuing that work to try to find solutions for this persistent problem. Uh, an update of this, this research is available on my website, as well as information about other aspects of nursery weed control. If you're dealing with NOSDOC, you know it's not going to be an easy solution, okay? Uh, but we are working on options and we hope to have some, some viable uh, treatment solutions for you in the near future. Thanks for joining us.